fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. of the first transcontinental railroad was one of the most important steps in the winning of the West. The railroad was of prime importance to the future of the country. But powerful forces, cattlemen, stagecoach lines, and steamship companies opposed it. Outlaw opposition sprang up, and the Lone Ranger was commissioned by the president to lead the fight against the enemies of progress. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beat to the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for end of track. Oh, Silver. Away. As the construction crew of the Great Central Railroad pushed its tracks further west, they came to a section of the plains that was notched with deep gullies and ravines, as though some prehistoric monster had clawed the earth. It was also the home of the hostile Cheyenne Indians. And as the little steam engine chugged along, pushing loaded flat cars toward end of track, the workmen became increasingly nervous. I tell you, Joe, I don't like it. What's the matter, Sam? This country, it gives me the creeps. Why do they have to lay a road bed through these ravines? Because it's easier than going around, I guess. Yeah, easier for some of them murdering redskins to get up there behind those rocks and take us off. Uh, we ain't seen hide nor hair of an engine for over a week. Sure, and that's the time when you better start worrying about redskins, when you don't see them. Pete, the foreman says there ain't no danger. Why are we packing guns in? I don't know. Now, here we are, end of track. Better start unloading or Pete will yell his head off. All right, you men up there. Let's get these ties down. Step lively now. Well, what did I tell you? Might as well start pitching. Yeah, but I still don't like it. Perhaps Sam's fear was prompted by more than suspicion. For at that very moment, the construction crew was sighted by three men who crouched behind a large rock high on one side of the ravine. The leader of the trio was thin-lipped Doc Barlow. By his side stood a boy in his early 20s known as Angel Face. And Murphy, the third man, was dressed as a Cheyenne Indian. Now listen, Murph, you too, Angel Face. Remember, I'm giving the orders around here what I should go, see? Why not shove this rock over now? It's big enough to smash three of those cars, maybe knock the engine over. Because I'm waiting for a signal. What kind? Never mind. We'll get a man down there. Get a wait till he moves up the track a little ways. <laughs> I could drill about ten of them before they knew what happened. Put that rifle down. There'll be no shooting. When I get the signal, you shove the rock. Murphy, you stand up so they can see you. Let out an Indian war whoop, understand? Yeah. Don't I even get one shot? Not unless they try to drill Murphy. Then what do we do? Get on our horses and ride from Plain Town. Uh, I thought I was hired in this job to do something. Only when I tell you to, Angel Face. Huh. Fine job. You just are forgetting, ain't you? There were just three pieces of lombrays that come out west from St. Joe. How about the Iron Spurs, another name for parlor games and pink tea. That's right. <laughs> parlor games? and pink tea. (laughs) 
Meanwhile, back at the end of track, the construction gang continued their work of unloading ties from the flat cars. They did not realize that high above them on a bluff overlooking the roadbed, three members of the notorious Iron Spur gang were planning death and destruction. Pete shouted to his men. Now, men, all together on these rails. we we'll take them one at a time. Grab it. Lift. One, two, three. That's the way, me laddies. Now the next one. Pete. I'm over thirsty. I gotta have a drink of water. Well, go down the track and find the water boy. And send him back here. We all could use a drink. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Pete. Hey, let me borrow your bandana, will you, Joe? The face is steaming. Sure, Sam. Here it is. Yeah, thanks. Now another one, men. Pick it up. Live. Pete. Look up there. That work. It's proper, boys. Show them your life. Finally, the Indians were beaten off, and Pete and the railroad men bandaged the wounded men, put them on the train, and headed back to the long line of construction shacks where the workers made their camp. Miss Barkley, Colonel Parkman's secretary, heard the news of the Indian attack and rushed to Colonel Parkman's office. Colonel Parkman, there's been an accident at the end of track. Yes, Joan. A big rock dropped from a ledge. You heard about it? Just a few minutes ago. Two cars completely smashed. And one man killed. Who was it? Joe McCullen. One of our best track men. Oh, that's too bad. Pete said it was Indians. Cheyennes, I suppose. And I was hoping we'd won their friendship. I'm not so sure it was Indians, Colonel Parkman. Pete said he saw one of them. It was timed too perfectly. White men can dress as Indians, you know. Oh, you mean... You mean the Iron Spur? Exactly. They know that the best way to put fear into the hearts of every man working for the railroad is with Indians. They've tried to rouse them against us, and failing in that, they're imitating them. Maybe you're right. I'm sure of it. I've asked for a detachment of soldiers from the fort, but the commanding officer seems to think I'm exaggerating the danger of this job. We still have the Lone Ranger to help us. Can you get word to him? I'm going to try. Here we'll both walk. <sighs> this is the place, right in this grove of trees. Now, if he only hears me. Oh, thank goodness. I knew he'd come. I rather expected you'd have a message for me. You know, then, what happened this afternoon out at end of track? Yes, I know. The railroad men expect serious trouble with Indians. I really can't blame them. One man was killed today and two flat cars were smashed. But it wasn't Indians who caused it. I know it wasn't. How do you know, Miss Barkley? Why, oh, oh, it's just suspicion, I guess. I know how relentless the Iron Spur is. How anxious they are to prevent the railroad from going through. Yes, I think you're right. There's an Indian village near the end of track, isn't there? Cheyennes, just a few miles east of the bunkhouses. But the Cheyennes aren't an especially warlike tribe. Only when they're aroused. Our men have done nothing to antagonize them. It must be the members of the Iron Spur. I know it is. What shall we do? Pete the foreman thinks the men will leave their jobs. Miss Barkley, go to the camp. Try to keep the men at work. I'm going to meet Tonto. <laughs> Hey, Tonto, I've been talking to Miss Barkley. Ah, uh, Tonto, wait. Have you been over to Plainville? Ah. Uh. Are there any strangers in town? Anyone who looks like a member of the Iron Spur? Three stranger. Two old, one young. Who are they? Well, Tonto, not know. Maybe them Iron Spur. Are they still there? Ah. Uh. Come on, then. We'll see who they are. Get them out. Come on, Silver. <laughs> Ranger and Tonto rode into Plainville, and it took them but a few minutes to reach the front of the Silver Star Cafe. 
Inside was the sound of much celebration. The masked man and his Indian partner dismounted, walked up the steps of the cafe, listened for a few moments outside the door, and then entered. They saw three men standing at the bar engaged in a noisy conversation. Taking a table in a corner where they would not be noticed, they listened to the heavy set member of the trio as he laughed about his exploits earlier in the day. You know, the best part of it was when we tied that young Cheyenne Indy to his horse and sent him home, eh? Yes, you must believe. <laughs> and the way he looked, what he got his hair cut off. I told him that was a regular railroad haircut. <laughs> hey, wait this old man, Chief Black Hawk, sees <laughs> Yeah, boys, I think we did a real story. Hey, wait Black Hawk, Black Hawk. Hello. Those are the men. Ah, uh-huh. They captured the young Indian and cut his hair off. Um, that'd be plenty bad. Yes, I know. It's the worst disgrace that can happen to a brave. Cheyenne chief put blame on railroad men. Toto, you know Chief Blackwell. Tell him it wasn't railroad men who sent his brave home in disgrace. I'll watch things at the camp. Oh, me do it. Get him up, scout. Meanwhile, Pete, the foreman of the construction gang on the railroad, was trying to persuade them to stay on the job. Joan Barkley stood beside him to give what aid she could. Now, men, men, please, you got to listen to me. The thing that happened today was an accident. It wasn't an Indian raid. You men aren't cowards. Listen to Pete. It was an Indian. I saw him. Well, we all saw him. But it was just one red skin. We've got to expect things like that. We all know it when we took this job. I didn't take a job as target for rock slides and engine bullets. I say let's all quit and go back home before we kill. But we promised to do a job. And a certain amount of danger is part of it. Not for me. How about the rest of us? Are you a bunch of babies that you let the sight of one Indian scare you? Why don't you ask Joe McCullen that question? He wasn't scared this morning either. But he's dead now. But that doesn't mean that we'll all be killed. Well, that's a good enough sign for me. All right, Sam. If you're afraid, why don't you quit? I'm just talking sense. Well, boys, boys, I never steered you wrong, have I? All you care about is this railroad with all their money. I say there ain't enough money in the world to pay for getting killed by engines. Boys, right, boys, right. boys, I know how you all feel. And I'd feel the same way if I'd been there today when Joe McCullen was killed. Now you're talking. But that same thing is not going to happen again. How do you know? Have you got a treaty with the Indians? <laughs> no, I haven't a treaty. But I have a lot of confidence in someone who's going to help us. Yeah? Who is it? I can't tell you. But I know it's real help. I suppose it's your fairy godmother. <laughs> Boys, don't listen to him, please. We've all got a job to do here. We're getting paid for it. So let's do it. How about the engine? There won't be any more trouble with the Indians. I know there won't. I promise you that. Oh, uh, maybe she's right. Maybe she is. Well, of course she's right. Now let's all forget about this idea of quitting. Get some sleep and do a good day's work tomorrow. How about it? All right. Hey, you hombres must be crazy. Don't you know all this railroad is after is to get their track built? They don't care how many men get killed building it. That's not true. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're the only one who wants to get out, Sam. The rest of us are going to stay on the job. Thank you, all of you. I knew you'd stick. Listen, listen. All of you listen. Listen to what? I'll open the door and you can get a real earful. Well, I don't hear anything. You don't? Well, just keep your ears open. It's getting louder all the time. You know what that is? I'll tell you. It's Cheyenne war drums. That means engines on the warpath. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger rode hard to meet Tonto at the Indian camp before Chief Black Hawk could attack the railroad men. He reined up short at the edge of the camp where the sound of the Indian war dance was louder than ever. There's Tonto. Wolf Silver, steady boy, steady. Tai! Hi, Kimasami. Where's the TP of Chief Black Hawk, Tonto? Uh, Tonto, show way. All right, lead the way, I'll follow. And this TP. Raise the flap, we'll go in. There's no time to lose. Chief Blackhawk, Tonto, come back. Bring white friend. Uh, Blackhawk, no friend with mask. Tai, 
Chief, I want to ask help of Black Hawk. Make talk, Black Hawk, no. Your braves are on the war path. They're going to attack the railroad men. Uh, Why do they do this? Men from Iron Horse make fools, shy and brave. I know what happened. I saw the men who did it. Uh, bad. Black Hawk not like. Make war medicine. But you're wrong, Chief. The men who cut your braves' hair are not with the railroad. Brave tell Black Hawk. He was mistaken. The men who did that are outlaws. If you make war against the railroad men, you'll be killing innocent people. How Black Hawk no white friend speak true? Because I give you my word. It has never been broken. Masked men always speak truth. Iron horse and you? No, I come alone. Because you're making a mistake, innocent people will suffer. Will you stop war medicine? Uh, will you do this for me? Uh, for white friend, Black Hawk do. For Iron Horse, no. It's for me. Uh, Black Hawk tell Braves. Uruga Manite! Uruga Manite! Thank you, Black Hawk. I'm proud to have such a good friend. Uh. Come along, Tato. It's much to be done. Uh, we go find outlaw? No, Tato. They can't do any more damage tonight. We'll keep an eye on the construction gang tomorrow. <coughs> Steady, Silver. <coughs> Steady, boy. You think Cheyenne not make war? They won't unless they're provoked. It's up to us to see that it doesn't happen. All right, Tato. Get him up. Come on, Silver. <laughs> Lone Ranger and Tonto rode back to the high bluff that overlooked the railroad construction camp. There they kept a vigilant watch all through the night, alert for any sound or sign of movement that would indicate the Indian chief had broken his promise. But Black Hawk was true to his word. The ominous throb of tom-toms was heard no more. The Braves had taken off their war bonnets and all was peaceful. However, the scheming members of the Iron Spur had also heard the war dance stop suddenly. They didn't know the reason for Black Hawk's sudden change of plans, but they realized the Indians would not attack. And on the following afternoon, their leader, Barlow, called a meeting. I found out why there was critters didn't make the attack last night. It was a lone ranger that stopped him. A lone ranger? Hang it, that hombre's always Hold pulling up. Hey. I still got an ace up my sleeve. We're going to do something tonight that the lone ranger that doesn't like him can't interfere with. What is it, Doc? Fire. I don't get you. There's a square mile of dry buffalo grass between the Indians' camp and the railroad bunkhouse. And there's an east wind... That's all we need. Fire will sure wipe out them wooden bunkers. Yeah, and everybody in them, huh? I think the Indians did it. After that, the railroad won't be able to hire a man west of the Mississippi for any kind of wages. Hey, who's behind this iron spur we're working for, Doc? None of your business. I was just thinking. It won't do you any good. Well, what do we do now? Lay low until the night. Then we'll fire up the prairie and vamoose. The job's done. Suppose this lone He ranger... couldn't stop it. Even if he knew about it. That's one thing nobody can stop. A prairie fire. Nervous and distraught by a strange sense of impending trouble, Joan Barkley spent all of that day watching the construction gang at work. She knew the Lone Ranger had somehow been able to prevent the threatened Indian attack of the night before, but she also felt that the present lull was an unnatural quietness which might portend another outbreak from some new and unexpected quarter. If the members of the Iron Spur were unsuccessful in arousing the Cheyennes to declare war, would they try the same tactics a second time? Or would they postpone the attempt until some future and indefinite time? These were questions she couldn't answer. And thinking about them only increased her fear and anxiety. At sundown, when the workmen had finished and gone to their bunkhouse, she returned to Colonel Parkman's office, tired and worried by a fear she could not put into words. I don't know what to expect next, Colonel Parkman. I wish I could feel that there was permanent peace with the Indians. The Lone Ranger is doing what he can to keep them friendly, but... But you think there'll be further trouble, huh, Joan? Mm, I'm afraid so. If only we could defeat this Iron Spur. As long as there's one member left to fight against the railroad, we must look for... What is it, sir? That red glow. Look out the west window. You see it? Oh, yes, it seems. <gasps> Colonel Parkman. Fire. It's way out by the end of track. Prairie fire. The bunkhouses, the buildings and supplies, everything will burn. Come on, we're right out there. It's fire, Tuttle. Somewhere between the Indian camp and the railroad. Ah, let plenty big. 
For this wind, it'll get bigger every minute. Come on, Silver! Come on, Scout! Come back, they told you about me. Listen a minute. Mast! Hey, you! I've heard of you. You're the Lone Ranger. Yes, I am. Don't accuse the Indians of this. You men, get down here with more shovels. Hey. Get boards, sticks, anything. Fight that fire. Beat them down. Now listen to me, Pete. Huh? This fire was started between here and the Cheyenne camp. Hey, Pete, get in there and fight it. Don't let it get ahead of you. Fight it. Then we'll fight the Indians. Uh, Come on, Indians. Big brother. man, talk oh, big. Too little. Bring up that engine. Get her in place. Why bring iron horse? It's no good to fight fire. I guess they want to use the water out of the boiler. Won't help much against this. Guard your feet, man! Stamp it out! Big fire, plenty bad on prairie. They're bad any place, Tonto. Especially with wind behind them. Kimasabi, wait. Tonto, watch sky. What about it? Take a look at moon. The moon? What do you mean? Look close. See clouds over moon? I see them, but... Clouds what? not move east to west. Then move west to east. Tonto, you're right. The wind is changing. That means the fire not come closer. If go back. The railroad houses will be saved after all. Uh, but it'd be plenty bad for Indian camp. You mean the Cheyennes? Cheyenne have no place to run. Big mountain at back. No way to escape. Fire burn camp. All Cheyenne burn. That's right. They'll be trapped. Anyway, wind blow. Fire bad. Wait a minute. The railroad goes by the south side of the mountain, skirts their camp. We could use the engine and cars. We could save them. Oh, railroad men not like to save Cheyenne. Indian lives are just as important as any others. Pete! Oh, Pete! Why do you want? I haven't got time to pull out. You won't have to worry. The wind's changing. The wind's changing. It is changing. I want to use that engine and those cars. What? The wind's switching to the southeast. The Indian camp is at the base of the mountain. They'll all be burned. Well, who cares? I do. I don't know. I'll take the steam cars and bring the Cheyennes back here. Well, that's crazy. You can't run a train through that fire. It'll roast your life. We'll take that chance. Look, wind already start change. Pete, Pete, give orders about the train. Now, look here. I don't know as I should. Then we'll take them, steady big fella. Here, Tonto, you need silver. Uh -huh. Now, wait a minute. Give the orders or I'll give them myself at the point of a gun. I'm going to let the water out of the engine boiler. Pete, we can use it to smother the sparks. Wait, are you the engineer? Yeah. Then leave the water in the engine. Put on more wood. Get the steam up. Hey, you're masked. Oh, I don't know who you are, but I'm letting the water out. We needed to smother the fire. Better do as he says, Bill. I reckon he knows what he's doing. That's better. Now, Pete, tell the rest of them. All right. Man, that's enough. Quiet! Quiet! The help of the wind, it looks like we've whipped the fire. You sure all can see... The thing that saved us is going to be bad for the Indian camp over by the mountain. Now, this man here is the Lone Ranger. He's going to take the engine and the cars and try to get through to save the Indians. What's the matter? Why have you stopped? The fire's still burning. The wind has changed, Sam. Now we're going to try and save the Indians. What? I'm taking instructions from this masked man. He's the Lone Ranger. Save the engines. He's crazy. Don't listen to him. You're in no danger. The fire can't jump this railroad right away. The Indians will be trapped. Team's up, Pete. She's ready to go. Good. I want a few men to ride with us and help the Indians. Who'll volunteer? Oh, 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 oh. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't listen to this mess, man. All he wants to do is let the fire get the plane mill. Don't go with him. Oh, Take the throttle. Come on, fellow. Now, uh, what do a silver and scout? <laughs> we'll take them with us. All right, Silver. Up you go. Up, scout. All right, Bill. We're ready. Oh. <laughs> Gradually picking up speed, the engine and three flat cars plunged into the inferno of blazing prairie grass. Tongues of greedy flame licked the iron rails and tried to climb onto the train itself. The air was thick with smoke and wind-borne embers as the Lone Ranger protected Silver from flying sparks. Steady, Silver. Steady, boy. We'll be through it soon. Finally, they reached the base of the mountain in the south edge of the Indian camp. There they found the stoical Cheyennes working in little groups trying to fight off the fire. You find Chief Blackhawk Tonto. Tell him to get his people on the cars as quick as he can. Ah, uh -huh. to do it. All right, Silver. We won't have to go far. Jump, boy. Where you go? I'll be right back, Steve, big fella. Come on, Silver. That's it. This way, boy. Oh, oh, easy, Silver. Oh, fast, man. Help us to get out. We'll be burned alive. I thought I'd find you somewhere around here. Get up, all three of you. Anything you say, but just get us out of this fire trap. We, <laughs> we can't breathe. You should have thought of that before you started this fire. We didn't start it. I know you did. I can't leave even you out here to burn to death. 
Ma will take care of you. <coughs> Start marching over to that train. <laughs> Back to the raging fire, the engine labored with its heavy load. The Indians were silent, but grateful for their deliverance. While under the watchful eye of the Lone Ranger, the three members of the Iron Spur were surly and sullen. As the rescue train backed up to the front of the bunkhouse, a large crowd awaited them. Uh, everybody glad Lone Ranger helped Cheyenne. That's Colonel Parkman and Miss Barkley, Tonto. Most amazing thing I've ever seen. How did you do it? Most of the credit is due to the engine, the men who ran it. Colonel, here are three men. You'd better turn over to the sheriff. Who are they? I don't know, but the sheriff will find out. Down, Silver, down, boy. Here, Scout. Colonel Parkman, you'll find that these three men are working for the Iron Spur. And there's three less of that gang to fight our job. And now the Indians will be on our side. Oh, Colonel Parkman, if only the Lone Ranger can always be with us. Help. Hold on there. Don't leave us now. We need you. We'll not be far away. Come on, Tonto. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.